Okay, so what's a tritone sub? Well, the best way to show you is first to show you a two, five, one chord progression, the numbers denoting where you are in the scale. So if you're in C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So two, five, one would be D minor, G seven, C major. And the chord that we're gonna be substituting is the five. So in this case, G seven. And all we do is we count down three whole tones. So from G, F, E flat, takes you to D flat, okay? That's the way you work out the substitution. Doesn't matter what key you're in. So if you're in F, C would be the five, and then you'd count down three whole tones, B, F sharp. Another easy way to find it is just think going up a fifth and then down a half step. So flat and fifth. But back to where we are, we're in C, so. So instead of the G, we're gonna play a D flat. So instead of, you get. This is still very much like straight ahead jazz. This is where this idea comes from. But you can incorporate it into more modern music like funk and soul. Uh, you know, I'm not a jazz musician, but I use this all the time. Uh, it's more apparent if you alter the chords a little bit. So if I had like a D minor nine, then a G altered. Then all I do is change the bass note, play the same chord. But instead of playing the G in the bass, I play D flat. Just gives you another thing to play and you can go from one to the other. So that's one way of using it. Another way you can use it is actually keep the bass the same, but move the chords down three steps. So instead of being this G7, you're gonna play D flat on the right hand and G in the left hand. It's quite an interesting sound. So you get this. So that's basically what a tritone substitution is. Now the thing is, you can use it anytime when you're going to a fifth in some music. Uh, Try to give you some other examples. It's going to G minor. Let's substitute that fifth now. So you might just throw it in sometimes just to change up the chord sequence a little bit, or as I said, as a passing chord. Again, let's throw in that more complicated version where we change the right hand instead of the left hand. Just adds a bit of sophistication to the harmonic structure. A good example of a tune using this is um, Stevie Wonder, Do I Do in the chorus. See that turn around at the end. There, you're at a tritone substitution. He actually starts um, a tone up, interestingly enough, uh, before. So you get a D over F sharp, and then he goes down to, which is a tritone substitution for. It's always the dominant seventh chord on the five before you go to the one. So as well as giving you more creative options with your chord sequences, it actually can really open out your soloing a bit as well. I don't like to go full on jazz because that's just not what I'm into. You know, I, I like things to be more straight ahead and then you just get that little kink, you know, and it just gives you that something extra when you want it as a soloist. So you can really use these tritone subs when you're playing. Let's give you an example. If I'm in D minor and I'm playing D minor nine, G minor nine and A minor seven, 
So if I was sort of soloing like that. So you can see there I'm just basically playing a pentatonic scale in D minor because that fits through the chord sequence. Uh, you can find more about that if you look at my how to solo over chord changes if you want to know about that. But what we're talking about now is expanding this a little bit. So instead of playing the A minor for the 5 chord, uh, I'm going to play an E flat 9 and that will just open up the plane now. Let's have a listen. So what's going on there? Nothing much really, it's just that when I get to that 5, instead of just continuing to play blues and not observing the chord change, I'm substituting that A minor for A, which if I played it in the bass it would be E flat 6 9 and it just really gives me a whole load more to play, you know I can play up and down that scale. E flat scale, I'm making the fourth A sharpened fourth because that puts it more in line with the A. So you can try that in any key you like. Uh, so if you're in if you're in F minor, the fifth is a five, so I'd play an F sharp six nine chord, let's say. And I can just pick any of the notes out of that chord and it will work over the C minor. So there you go, that's just one example, but it's an easy one where you can swap out the fifth. You can swap it out for this, going down three whole tones and playing a 6-9, which in this case, if it was C minor, the 6-9 would be F sharp, like that. If you play those notes, it will always work and it gives you this little jazzy flavor. Uh, there's different things you can do with this stuff. Um, it's quite interesting that uh, minor thirds also couple together really well. So when you go up to that substitution, when you're playing this, you can go up in minor thirds. Don't know why, that just works going up in those minor thirds. It's very filmic, you hear that all the time in film music. So you can mess around with that stuff, it depends on how far you want to go with it. You know, it can get quite obscure sounding, um, but you can throw in some of those minor thirds from the substitution as well. Uh, let's try and make an example of it. It's not something I probably use a lot in my playing because I don't like to go too far outside, but sometimes it's fun to pull in these things and just give you another little flavour.
So there you can see I was incorporating those minor third up substitutions that go from the fifth. And then also incorporating this chord, the 6-9 chord. That gives you tons of options to play with. Start off just by randomly going from one to the other. So you can hear that gives you tons more things to play. It's not as half as clever as it sounds. The clever bit is how you combine those things so that you're not just sort of going up and down in between each arpeggio, you know. I'm not an expert at this, but I'm just using a tiny bit of it in my playing and I've become more interested in it in sort of latter years, just because I want to expand and learn new things. And it's kind of fun to just put in a little bit of that, you know. So just have a play with those things, you know, when you're going to the dominant fifth, think as substitutions and you can just mess around and see what it sounds like, see which sounds you like and how much of them you want to use. Like I say, I don't use much of them because, you know, it's, it's just going into territory that I don't want to go into, but I like using a little bit of it, especially these days, I've, I've got more into it. Um, it's kind of fun, it just gives you another colour. Just practice that and play around with it and see if it's something that's interesting to you, you know, and I think you, you get the idea more and more and you can just incorporate a tiny little bit of it into your playing or you can go all out. If you become more interested in these things, there's loads of great resources. Um, there's a good one called Open Studio and it's all jazz kind of stuff and it really goes deep into that stuff and it's great. Really recommend checking that out. Well, I hope you've got something from all this. Uh, until next time, see ya.